At PenFed Credit Union, we believe we all deserve to do better with our money. So we have great auto loan rates on new and used vehicles in every town in the USA. PenFed's got great rates for everyone. Good morning, America. Just three days until the Trump inauguration, as our brand new poll shows the president-elect is one of the most unpopular men ever to take office. But some hope for the economy and jobs. Now Trump calls NATO obsolete, alarming some of our biggest allies. This morning, inside the record $100 million inauguration. Breaking news in the flight MH370 mystery. The underwater search for that missing Boeing 777 called off for good after vanishing almost three years ago with 239 on board. Will that mystery ever be solved? Deadly nightclub attack. A gunman opens fire at a crowded music festival in Mexico. At least five people dead, including one American. Hundreds stampede into the streets through the chaos. And we hear from the American victims this morning. Is that Godzilla? The monster gator caught on camera making huge headlines, spotted taking a stroll in Florida. Went in at 1,000 pounds, the gigantic reptile almost 14 feet long, now seen by millions, up close and personal now with the dinosaur lookalike. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. I think I could outrun them. I don't want to try it, but <laughs> just think we can. Good morning, America. Just three days away from Donald Trump's inauguration as the 45th president of these United States. This is a live look at the National Mall in D.C. this morning, where they're gearing up for that big event. An estimated 700 to 900,000 people are expected on Friday. Some already arriving. And that means a massive mm -hmm. security effort. Federal force of 28,000, 6,000 local police. And the city in lockdown mode right now. Federal employees being urged to work from home. And uh, meanwhile, here are some signs of change in D.C. The DailyMail.com. Get in these pictures of the movers mm -hmm. at the D.C. home where President Obama will be moving with his family after he takes a nice and needed vacation in Palm Springs. Yeah, yeah and they'll have a quick effort to get President Trump into the White mm -hmm. House as well. We have a brand new ABC News Washington Post poll released just now. It shows some tough numbers for the president-elect. Only 40% approve of how he's handled the tr transition. That is half the number we've seen with recent presidents like Barack Obama, George H.W. Bush. John Carl here with more of the new numbers. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. Pr president-elect Trump will go into office with a majority of Americans viewing him unfavorably. George, that is something we simply have never seen in the modern era. Just look at the numbers going all the way back to Jimmy Carter. Every newly elected president experiences some kind of honeymoon. Donald Trump, just 40 percent viewed favorably. Uh, but there's a contradiction here, and it's a fundamental one, George. Most Americans have high expectations for how he'll handle the big issues. 60 percent believe he'll do an excellent or good job on the economy. 56 percent believe he'll do an excellent or good job handling terrorism. So viewed unfavorably, but still, George, high expectations for his presidency on those issues. And there has been some improvement for the president-elect on the number of Americans who see him qualified to hold the office. You know, it's come, it's come down, it's come up since the campaign, but you still have a majority of Americans, 52 percent, see him as unqualified for office. And what's driving that in our new poll, George, is that a majority, a big majority, 61 percent, simply do not trust Donald Trump to make the right decisions. And if you look at some of the other issues, low expectations for how he'll handle international crises, low expectations for how he handle race issues, gender issues, and health care. And the whole issue of Russian hacking of the election still hanging over this transition. You had about two-thirds of Americans who believe Russia hacked the election, and two-thirds, just about two-thirds, saying they were trying to help Donald Trump. Yeah, and a vast majority think that Trump simply has not handled this issue well. Look at that number. Uh, you've got 35 percent, barely a third of voters approve of how he's handled this hacking issue. Okay, John Call, thanks very much. And George, now to the reaction over Donald Trump's comments on NATO. His comments creating tension with our allies overseas. ABC Cecilia Vega is at the White House with more details about that. Cecilia. Robin, good morning to you. Tonight could be the night for Donald Trump to make nice with some of those allies. And what is the first big kickoff to this inaugural week? Donald Trump here in an exclusive dinner in Washington. 200 foreign diplomats also there. Their first chance to come face to face at his big swearing in.
After his MLK weekend war of words with a civil rights leader, President-elect Donald Trump making a surprise Trump Tower appearance with none other than Martin Luther King's own son. The goal is to bring America together. But overseas, the soon-to-be 45th President of the United States shocking and igniting fear in some of America's closest allies. Trump bashing NATO, the longtime political and military alliance of 28 countries from North America and Europe. And I said a long time ago, that NATO had problems. Number one, it was obsolete because it was you know, designed many, many years ago. And refusing to say who he trusts more, Germany's Angela Merkel or Russia's Vladimir Putin. Well, I start off trusting both, but let's see how long that lasts. It may not last long at all. And as for Merkel... I think she made one very catastrophic mistake, and that was taking all of these illegals, and, you know, taking all of the the people from wherever they come from. But the president-elect did have big praise for Brexit, that United Kingdom withdrawal from the European Union. I think Brexit's going to end up being a great thing. The reaction yeah, swift. Yeah. Merkel yeah. saying, yeah. we Europeans yeah. have our fate yeah. in our own hands. Yeah. And National Security Advisor Susan Rice coming to her defense. It's very hard to understand how one could equate Angela Merkel, uh, our, the chancellor of Germany, one of our very closest allies in the world, with Vladimir Putin. And this morning, the CIA director is in a heated war of words with Donald Trump. John Brennan saying he is not the one who leaked that dossier on Russia, telling the Wall Street Journal, Robin, that he does not want to give that dossier any additional airtime. All right, Cecilia, thank you. We're going to bring in ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, ask her a little bit more on what Cecilia just said there about the CIA director. What, what do you make of that, Martha? Well, Brennan said the idea that he leaked that was repugnant, and he said, tell the families of those 117 CIA officers who gave their lives for the country that their loved ones were akin to Nazis. Very sobering words, Robin, but don't expect an apology from Donald Trump. And he is continuing to fight back. Well, talking about Trump's words about NATO, it's a different tone than what some of his cabinet picks are saying. It is, Robin. If President-elect Trump's grand strategy here is to keep our adversaries and allies confused and guessing as to what a Trump administration holds for them, he has been successful already. I don't know whether this is a good cop, bad cop scenario, but what Donald Trump is saying is very different than what his cabinet picks said at confirmation hearings. Trump calls NATO obsolete. His nominee for Secretary of State says the commitment to NATO is secure, and his nominee for Defense Secretary James Mattis says NATO is vital to our national interests, vital to the security of the U.S., vital to the protection of the freedoms of the democracies we're allied with. The president-elect is clearly listening to his nominees, but we'll see how much influence they have. And quickly, how, how's the reaction been from other European leaders about this? Well, uh, well as Cecilia said, uh, it, it's pretty astonishing. I mean, they are watching this very closely. They, they just don't know how to react at this point. All right, Martha, thank you, Michael. All right, thank you, Robert. And now we're going to talk about that dangerous ice storm that hit the Midwest overnight. The ice and snow is now heading to the northeast. And Ginger, you have the latest on that. What's going on? And Michael, you know it's bad when you have to skate instead of drive. That's what they're doing here in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and that storm is still with us, moving now to the north and east, even stretching as far south as Louisiana and Texas. Down there, it's storms and rain right in this part. The northeast also going to get some ice, but we're not done with it for another 18 hours. Overnight, that deadly ice storm glazing roads from the Midwest to the northeast, even sending plows off the road near Des Moines, Iowa, and this car sliding into a frozen lake. Encrusting lights, cars, everything in West Michigan. In South Dakota, this semi truck lost control on the ice, spilling oranges all down the highway. Nothing to play with today, because it caught me by surprise. In Nebraska, trees and roadways covered with almost an inch of ice. And in La Crosse, Wisconsin, kids actually skating on the streets. On the southern side of the storm, a big rig driver spotting this tornado in Houston. The National Weather Service confirming at least three tornadoes in Texas. Now, crews are cleaning up the mess. The strong winds ripping the window panes right off this Dallas skyscraper. Winds up to 60 miles per hour also plowing through Marietta, Oklahoma. This home now dirt from the floor to ceiling. The roof torn off. So the advisories in Wisconsin, Michigan, parts of Minnesota, those go until about noon in general. But in the east, we've got this again for much of our Tuesday. So this 
comes through, majority of the I-95 corridor to the south is going to remain rain, but it will start to mix in with a wintry mix if you're west of Boston, say Worcester, especially as everyone makes their home uh, ride home tonight. Manchester, New Hampshire, for example, in that winter storm warning in places, four to even seven inches of snow could fall, and then eventually by Wednesday morning, this stuff starts to get out. I have to mention quickly, a huge change for the west, more rain on the way, an ice storm warning in Portland. Portland, Oregon, you guys, has had nine snow days already. This is a place that rarely gets one. Nine so already. Wow. That's right. Big stuff. And San Diego, LA, about to get hit with a lot of water, too. I'll talk about it in a moment. My kids are jealous. They haven't had a snow day. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on now. We have some breaking news this morning. The search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 has finally ended. After three years covering 46,000 miles, 239 died when the plane disappeared without a trace. ABC's Lama Hassan is in London with the story. Good morning, Lama. And good morning to you, George. That's right. The hunt for Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 has now officially been called off. This morning, a joint statement, the transport ministers of Malaysia, China and Australia issuing it, saying after spending more than $160 million and despite every effort to find the plane using the best science available and cutting edge technology, scouring a desolate stretch of the Indian Ocean, no trace has been found of the Boeing 777. The ministers adding the decision to suspend the underwater search was neither taken lightly nor without sadness. George? And Lama, any reaction from the families yet? Yeah, George, as you can imagine, this news is devastating for the families of the victims. 239 souls lost when the plane vanished nearly three years ago. This morning, the families calling this decision irresponsible, demanding they extend the search. One Australian woman saying, quote, they promised they would bring them home, and now they're just giving up. So a very difficult time for the friends and families of the victims. Yeah, you can George. see why they want those answers. Okay, Lama, thanks very much. Absolutely, George. New developments now on that New Year's terror attack that left 39 people dead in Istanbul. Turkish police say that the alleged gunman has confessed to opening fire in that crowded nightclub. ABC's Alex Marquardt is in Moscow with the very latest on this. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Robin. That's right. The attacker finally apprehended after 16 days on the run. He was arrested in an Istanbul apartment after fears that he might try to escape the city, even slip across the border into Syria. Istanbul's governor this morning identified the attacker as Abdul Qadir Mashripov, a citizen of Uzbekistan who got training in Afghanistan. He said Mashripov has confessed to this attack that left 39 dead just after New Year's Eve. Uh, at the Reina nightclub. The fingerprints match those found at the scene. He said Mashripov was found with two pistols on him, as well as $197,000 in cash. The governor saying it is clear that this attack was carried out in the name of ISIS. And Alex, do we know more about ISIS possible involvement that you just mentioned? Well, that's what the authorities will be looking into, whether there are any direct ties between the attacker and ISIS. It's clear that there was a significant level of support. Remember, ISIS has claimed responsibility for this attack, saying it was in response to Turkey's actions against the group in Iraq and Syria. Uh, they also said that the shooter was what they called a soldier of the caliphate. Robin. All right, Alex, thank you. Okay, we have a health warning now. Two reports raising big concerns about a rise in superbugs that can resist even the most powerful antibiotics. Our chief health and medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, is here. And Rich, how worried are you about this? Yeah, this, this is what you might call a nightmare scenario. The first report came from CDC, and it's a woman in Nevada who died from an infection resistant to all antibiotics licensed in the U.S. She'd been hospitalized in India and probably brought it back. The second report out of Boston looked at how commonly these resistant bacteria are found in our bodies, and they found them much more commonly than expected. Bacteria pick up resistance from other bacteria and then are spread person to person, making the hospital very dangerous for people. So, so what can people do to protect themselves? Well, the first thing is, whenever you're prescribed an antibiotic, ask, do I really need an antibiotic for this condition? The second is, if you're hospitalized, tell your doctor if you've ever been in a medical facility overseas so they can test you and, and isolate you. And lastly, before anyone touches you, make sure they've washed your hands. That's the most important. Thing. So, key, Rich yeah. Besser, thanks very much. Let's go over to Michael. All right, thank you, George. And now to that deadly shooting at a popular nightclub in Mexico. Five people were killed, including an American woman. At least 15 more were injured, with Americans among them. ABC's Matt Gutman, Gutman is in Los Angeles with the latest. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, Michael. We now know there are at least five Americans among the casualties. Investigators have ruled out terror and are searching for a man who apparently tried to bring a gun into the club. When security guards tried to stop him, a gunfight broke out, resulting in a stampede of hundreds of partygoers and carnage. 
Instantly, the beat of the music gave way to the staccato of gunfire and those screams. Five were killed and 15 wounded when a gunman opened fire in this packed nightclub in the Mexican resort town of Playa del Carmen early Monday. And this morning, we learned four Americans were among the wounded and among those killed near the dance floor, Alejandra Villanueva Ibarra from Denver. Her brother telling our Denver affiliate, We're just trying to figure out how we're going to bring my sister back. Her friend Ignacio Valencia was right there. I was in shock and I, I didn't want to leave my friend either, but I couldn't pick her up because I was also injured. He himself had been shot in both arms. I'm lucky because the bullets just went through and nothing was inside of them. Another of the bullets fired hit Heather Parham from Spokane, Washington in the backside. Ibarra, the American, had been crushed in the stampede to flee the shooting. Fellow American Bria Didson was also trampled on. I was in so much pain, I can't stand. I'm crying, I'm begging people to help me. No one's helping. You know, everybody's running. Yeah, it's hard to think about what could have happened. At first, some of the crowd attending a week-long electronic dance music festival didn't react. These people only starting to run when they see a bond in the street. You hear them yell, run into the bathroom now. Woman who was killed, Alejandra was 18 years old. Her little brother told us that he started a fund campaign to help their single mother. Cases recently, the drug war has spilled. Mexican resorts popular with Americans. Mexican officials are saying this is a personal dispute and was an isolated. Yeah, but still the result. Let's kind of turn to Amy now for the other top stories. Good morning, everyone. And three men. Were Project in Key Largo have died. Men inhaled toxic fumes under a firefighter who climbed down a 15 foot hole trying to rescue them is now in critical condition. He had to leave the impact behind because it was too big to get out. Well, General Motors is a $1 billion investment in its U.S. factories. will create about 1,000 jobs. This comes after President elect Trump criticized in Mexico. Wall Street is analyzing new details about Britain's union. Prime Minister Theresa May says she will not gain any partial membership in the EU, but she says the British Parliament will it, and she hopes to begin trade negotiations by March. The last person to walk on the moon has died before leaving the lunar surface back in 1970. Gene Cernan wrote his daughter's initials in the moon dust. A test pilot and ABC News analyst was well, a close encounter for Florida. Look at that. A 12-foot shark leaping out of the water. They say it jumped out of the water several times before swimming away 30 minutes later. Oh, but guess what? Here's those start animal sightings in Florida. Look at that guy. Only as a monster alligator at this nature reserve. Some calling him God. Look, he's just so chill. Moving. Time. Well, maybe it's because it's 13 feet long. One woman who was there admits she should have been afraid, but she was just in awe. She did nature at its best. In the caption in my post, uh, probably pretty cool to see from a distance. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be. But I wonder if other gators look <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you guys heard of this? Mm. Too much snow snowboard? Well, yeah. in Utah, they had to because the roads were closed, people couldn't get to it. Then they had a beautiful weekend snowboarding, and a lot more moisture is coming away, even as far south as Los Angeles, up to two inches of rain today. Let's get to the Tuesday trivia now, brought to you. Hey, Silkman! What you doing? Hi. <laughs> All right! Hey, you with jogging? Silk protein nut milk. It's got protein. That's a lot. Oh, Becky, it's the most. Silk man. Oh, gotta run. The door's on the other side. Tastes like better. Scattered light work today. That may slow you down with wet paint. Upper 30s to start out. Heading. Out to